angry figure. He was an embittered figure, and he was somebody who felt the system was against him. I've thought about it over the years, and I'm penniless and everything for it, but um, it had to be said. Hi, welcome to this uh, video. Dave which is about for its trading motivation for beginners and how to acquire a key skill for Forex trading success, which most traders don't even think about when they come in the markets. Now, I've used uh, an intro there of a guy called John Healy, and a lot of you might be thinking, why am I using a guy who ended up penniless as motivation for Forex trading success? Well, he did end up penniless through no fault of his own, but what he did achieve um, was truly remarkable. You can see from the comments on the way in, because he achieved success in a game that no one thought that he could. And the way he did it is exactly what you need to do to achieve success in Forex trading. He mastered a certain skill, okay? Now, in relation to Healy, um, the game that he mastered is one that I play, but not as well as him. But the game itself, actually, if you study how great players play that game, you will get a framework of rules also to help lead you to Forex trading success. Now, I just want to give you a quick clip on why his story was so remarkable. And actually, the game that he became UK champion at. Let me take about a minute or so, OK? And also on this clip, there is someone who says something about him which is totally wrong. And I want to explain why it's wrong in more detail in a moment, because again, it gives a misconception about what it takes to achieve success. Right, here's the quick intro clip, then we'll be back to I discuss. I started drinking when I was about 15. I used to drink with winos and then think these people are mad, they're barbarians. Then eventually I was one of them. When I was in prison on my last sentence, he taught me to play chess. This was the surprising thing about John Healy, that he actually had these enormous mental abilities that chess demands. Soon after that, I started writing. It's one of the sort of, as it were, top 10, top 15 books that I've ever published. I really thought it was a I will come back off that short summary there. So got a guy, no formal education, alcoholic by the time he's 15, on the streets, goes to jail. When he comes out, he quickly becomes a chess grandmaster and writes a best-selling book as well. Now, one of the reasons Healy is so motivational for me is that book, The Grass Arena. It's absolutely superb. The title comes from the parks in Camden Town, London, where all the drunks and homeless people used to congregate a good few years ago. Now, back in the 70s, I actually worked in Camden Town as a builder. I used to go and recruit um, some of those people from the grass arenas for casual labour if we needed a few extra hands on the site, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when you used to go down there, uh, they did appear like barbarians, as John Healy says in the clip, you know, fighting, everyone's drunk, you know, yeah, obviously not a great uh, environment, let's say. But when you actually got those guys and, and they worked for you, you chatted to them, they were all actually okay. You know, we're all given um, different advantages or disadvantages in life. And I suppose, for me, Healy getting away from that and achieving what he did, I, I just find really motivational. Anyway, I digress back to um, how he achieved success. Now, a guy in the intro clip there says, you know, no one thought he would have those huge mental capabilities that are demanded by great chess players or, or chess players need. It's a total misconception, okay? You don't need, you know, extraordinary mental capabilities to win at chess, okay? What Healy did was he learned a certain skill anyone can basically master. And I want to explain it in relation to chess on a quick storyboard and then explain how that skill works in Forex trading. It's slightly different, um, but it's the same concept. So what we'll do is we'll look at uh, chunking, as it's called, and you have to learn to chunk data in chess and in Forex if you want to win. Then what we're going to do is look at some traits of great 
chess players, which you keep them in mind, can help make you a consistent Forex trader. Then I'm going to finish up with my favourite quotes from chess or on chess. And all you have to do is just take the word chess out, put the word Forex in, and you'll see just how applicable um, they are to helping us win a Forex trade. A lot of similarities between what it takes to become a great chess player and a great Forex trader. So let's uh, just look at the concept of chunking. Uh, just take a minute or so, then I'll become, sorry, then I'll come back and discuss in more detail. Right, um, we just saw an example of chunking there in chess, and you can see that yeah, grandmasters playing without even looking at the board um, doesn't mean they're particularly intelligent or they've got superhuman memories. It's just experience. Um, and you reading off this screen is experience. You're chunking, okay, just like a chess player's chunking. And in forex trading you need to chunk as well in terms of, yeah, when you first look at a Forex chart as a beginner, what you're going to do is try and make sense of it by looking at it in great detail, taking your time, trying to weigh up all the different parts of the chart or if you're using indicators. When you become experienced, you don't do that because you just chunk the chart. Just look at it. You know what to do. Or if there's nothing to do, you know that as well. Now, in terms of chunking, um, as humans, we have natural tendency to see patterns and, and make connections. That's what chunking is all about. Uh, it's important for memory, um, so we can memorize more. It's also a source of creativity. Yeah, Steve Jobs once famously said, creativity is just connecting things. It is. And as, as Forex traders, we have to be creative. We've got to get a trading edge. We've got to see things differently to the majority, okay? And you get the majority of people in Forex trading want to train rigid patterns. You see them all over the net. Um, just use this one set pattern, you can win. No, you can't, okay? It's not that easy. Um, you've got to basically um, chunk and basically get a trading edge from that. Now, how long does it actually take to chunk in forex trading. Well, the, the general rule in chunking is thousand hours, okay? Um, that's the rule of thumb. I don't think it takes that long in forex trading. Obviously, the more experience you get, the better. But I, I think probably a few hundred hours um, is enough. And what you've got effectively in chunk, sorry, chunking is subconscious recall. Yeah, chess players, when they play games of chess, Obviously, every game of chess, the experience is stored in the subconscious. And it's the same in Forex trading. Every chart you look at is uh, basically put in the subconscious. And it will help you make sense, obviously, of the chart you're looking at in the present time. OK, now, in terms of um, chess, OK, I just want to go through um, 10 points in relation to the game that will just basically help beginners um, in terms uh, of seeing Forex trading in the right way. And you don't have to go and play the game of chess, but I think if you do play the game of chess, it is a great help in terms of Forex trading. Right, 
Let's have a look at the points. Point number one, chess helps you manage uncertainty. It does. Um, you don't know uh, what the other player is going to do. When you sit down at the board, you get used to managing uncertainty and feeling comfortable with it. How many Forex traders really feel comfortable with uncertainty? Hardly any. They just don't like it, not knowing what's going to happen next. I think chess certainly helps you manage that. Um, chess teaches flexibility and out-the-box thinking. Well, it does. Um, you can't play the same way in chess all the time, just like you can't use set rules and patterns in Forex trading. You have to have a degree of flexibility. What it really teaches you is out-of-the-box thinking, you know, solving problems that you face on the board. So you, you basically, when you play chess, you learn to think differently, okay? You learn to question, um, you learn to solve problems. And yeah, that comes into play in Forex trading as well. Chess teaches situational awareness and to be objective. It does, okay? You're aware of the situation on the board and you need to be totally objective about it. Now you, you take, a forex trader when he's looking at a situation in the market he doesn't have to be totally objective um and then yeah most forex traders are not let's say in relation to yeah running a loss they'll see the loss uh, and they'll do nothing about it they won't be objective their emotions will be in play yeah chess helps you control emotions and also help you control impulsive decisions and and many traders are too impulsive. Let's say when they've got losing trade, they might double it up, or they've got a winning trade, they'll overexpose themselves and they'll lose. Now, chess actually forces you to take action. I think for beginners, um, they're always going to run losses. Okay, uh, yeah, there's no pressure to take action, is there? Just let the loss run. In chess, you're always forced to take action. You've always got to make a move. Now, in terms of chess players, they focus on good moves relative to the situation. So, yeah, if they yeah, basically need to retreat a bit or retreat pieces or maybe sacrifice a piece or whatever, they'll do that, okay? That is the best move relative to the situation, okay? Yeah. What you need to do, obviously, in chess, and, and it's basically protect the king. You just translate that into Forex trading. Um, you need to protect your account, okay? So chess players always make good moves relative to the situation. Um, yeah, I've put, obviously, you don't win chess games with just forward moves, which I've just mentioned. You are constantly changing between attack and defense, depending on how the game is developing, okay? And yeah, I think with, with Forex traders, um, although a lot of Forex traders know they're supposed to take losses, they know they're supposed to keep them small, they don't think of it like a, a chess game at all. They just do not want to lose. Yeah, you don't win a chess game uh, by not retreating. You don't win a chess game by not losing pieces. It's just part of the game. Forex trading losses are part of the game. Um, I'll put point number nine, the fatal mistake of chasing pawns. You can always tell when you're trading, uh, not trading, playing an inexperienced player. They always want to take a piece, okay? Even if it's a lowly pawn, okay? Um, that's the equivalent in, in Forex trading of traders snatching a profit, okay? They, they just want a result. You don't make money in Forex trading taking small profits. You've got to run them. OK, yeah, great chess players don't focus on just taking pawns for the sake of it. There's just no point. You're there to win the game. OK, um, point number 10, uh, great chess players seize the initiative. Um, they do. In terms of there comes a point in a chess game where you've got a position or, or a situation which you feel you can exploit, you go for it. OK, a lot of traders actually never really go for it when the opportunity arises, like when they get a really you know, high odds move or very often they'll be paralyzed um, by not being able to take action. Just normally that's due to a lack of confidence in my view. I think, you know, in, in chess, it, it just teaches you 
a way of thinking that is very, very useful in Forex trading, okay? I, I think it's a fantastic game. Yeah, um, it really is. I think it was John Healy called it the opium of the mind. It really is an absorbing game. I'm not saying you should go and play chess, but uh, great game, great game. Now, in terms of Healy, I think Healy shows um, that, yeah, basically, it's not, it's not talent in chess that makes a great player. It, it's down to basic practice, chunking and getting the right mindset. Same in Forex trading. It's not talent that makes a great Forex trader. It's basically chunking, experience and, and getting the same sort of thinking process as a great chess player. Now, I did mention, obviously, earlier on with John Healy, it didn't end up well for him. Um, it didn't, actually, in terms of he was really an outsider in the chess community because of his background. Yeah, he's never really accepted, so he didn't continue with that. Um, with his book, again, um, his background worked against him, taken out of print. Uh, it was recently um, republished. I think it was Daniel Day-Lewis actually paid for that to be done. I think, yeah, with Healy, he's just an outsider um, and just because of his background. And I think a lot of traders get how would I put it, um, intimidated by the Forex markets because they think it's all, yeah, people with high IQs, intelligence, so they've got lots of technology. Um, uh, uh, and they haven't, so they feel a little bit like John Healy. Uh, it's no disadvantage at all because, um, you know, at the end of the day, what makes a great Forex trader is just what we've been discussing here. You're at no disadvantage against the so-called big boys with all their research departments and computers because if you look at the figures in terms of what sort of performance they have it's dire overall okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish off with my favorite quotes from chess which i find quite motivational and i'm going to put them over um a little bit of footage um uh, which is over the film of John Healy's life. It won, won some awards, actually. Again, it's called The Grass Arenas, and it's him and the Brighton Fox, who is his cellmate, who taught him to play chess, and they're playing chess without a board. I hope you enjoy the quotes. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching me, as usual. Take care, and have a good Bishop day. Bishop to King Six. Night to King's Rook 3. Oh, you can't. There's a pawn there. You bastard. How do you get there? You put him there, Fox. Seven moves ago. What about uh, King's Rook 5? Yeah, you can go there. If you want. Uh, leaves me open. No, wait. Uh, King's... King 3? Still in my head in trying to remember. Knight to King Six. Ah. Knight to King Six. Rook to King One. Oh, bollocks! I'm sending out for a board. <laughs> he I took the chess in prison, and that was very important for him, immensely important, because he, he started playing chess like the way he drank. He started to take over uh, everything in my head. There were these horror stories of this violent, derelict, vagrant suddenly invading the chess world, suddenly outperforming people who've been playing all their lives. It was just impossible.